duty. A starship captain's life is filled with solemn duty. I have commanded men in battle. I have negotiated peace treaties between implacable enemies. <sighs> I have represented the Federation in first contact Paul. with 27 Paul. alien species, hey. but none. Paul. What? Hey, no. Hey, we didn't watch Star Trek Nemesis for tonight's movie. What? I think you watched the wrong movie. We watched Nemesis. Yeah, no, no, not Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis. But not Star Trek Nemesis. We watched Nemesis. But none of this compares with my <laughs> solemn duty today as best man. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard for B-Movie no, Mania. Paul, Paul, this is your intro, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Got it. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult. Your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hello, and welcome B-Movie fans and phaniacs. I'm your host for the evening, Crazy Chris Hudson. And we're not here to talk about Star Trek. In fact, we're so not here to talk about Star Trek that Mike Hayes is with me tonight to not talk about Star Trek. Mike's come in all shapes and sizes, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing my cyberpunk outfit. It's no worse than Jay's. <laughs> you look like a really terrible safari hunter. <laughs> I look more Cyber like I'm like safari. I'm one of the frogs from Hell Comes to Frog Town. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the other cyberpunk classic. Mm -hmm. Also here to not talk about Star Trek tonight is Jason Holes. Hi. <laughs> I have nothing prepared. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nothing, nothing prepared. prepared. I just, hello. Wow. Thank you. And apparently to talk about Star Trek tonight is Paul A. Brooks. State of the fucking art, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm done with, I'm done with Star yeah. Trek Nemesis. I got my... My, my Star Trek yaya's out. Nice, nice. I'm glad you were able to get that out during the intro. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So, tonight we watched Nemesis, a 1992 cyberpunk cyborg classic bit of science fiction. Uh, what yeah, are we, classic. <laughs> real classic. <laughs> what, what, are we, uh -oh. what are we doing to celebrate everything that is cyberpunk tonight while we record? Oh, well, drinking. <laughs> drinking. Yep. Drinking's important. I'm chipping in. Jay's chipping in. I see you have some clipping ins on your head or something. What is that? Oh yeah, these these are they're like uh, little uh, trodes, and it lets me see into the virtual reality, so I, I can see you in in a very <laughs> different way in the Matrix. <laughs> well, my cyberpunk thing is this is just this Dairy Queen drink that's like ninety percent vodka. Whoa, so it's very <laughs> cyberpunk. It's, it's red. The Dairy Queen Corporation <laughs> produces that. I'm fucking rolling here on some electric crocodile tears, man. It's fucking good. You're just a speed loader. I'm a real fucking speed loader, man. <laughs> so, Nemesis. Nemesis from Nemesis. 1992 is written by Rebecca Charles, whom you might know from absolutely nothing else. Oh, I do. What is her story? You know, do you know? No idea what her story is. I can tell you. Rebecca Charles is a pseudonym for Albert Pyon. Oh, yeah, that makes what? sense. What? Oh, that's are you disappointing. goddamn kidding me? And this is the dark cyberpunk future, Mike. Get used to disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay, who is Albert Pyon? Albert Pyon has directed a lot of B-movies. Um, he directed one of the first B-movies I ever saw, Cyborg. Nice. He's directed a bunch of sequels for this one. Nice. Nemesis 2, Nebula. Nemesis 3, Pray Harder. 
Nemesis 4, Death Angel, Nemesis 5, the new model, Nemesis 6, and Cyborg Nemesis, the Dark Rift, was supposed to happen, but didn't, because he had to withdraw, because unfortunately he has dementia. Did he direct 5? According to IMDb, yes. someone else, unless it's another pseudonym. Well, no, I read that 5 is completely filmed, but he had to back away while there was still editing and special effects and something else to do with it, uh, because he, he uh, his dementia was getting too much, and he, he had to back away from the project. And so he said it would never be released, but it, I believe it has been released. I believe it has, and I think Cyborg Nemesis part six no nemesis six cyborg nemesis <laughs> which has actors and characters from cyborg <clears throat> it was uh also supposed to happen but did not well nemesis also stars and i hope i pronounce this right because i'm terrible at other languages olivier gruner i believe that's how i heard it pronounced right. on the behind the scenes i watched Ooh, nice you watch behind the scenes i am expecting a lot out of you tonight mike but he stars yeah, a little bit <laughs> he stars as alex rain and we get tim thomerson as the main villain farnsworth and there are is a young thomas jane and jackie earl haley both in supporting roles in this one uh and deborah shelton too please do not forget her oh yeah well how could i forget her which who was she again <laughs> deborah shelton was julian ah Well, let's move on to a quick synopsis. How would you guys describe this movie? Are you asking for a quick take? Sure. Quick takes. Chris, this movie has one of everything from every movie, and I'm here for it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I have no idea what that means. Jay, quick (laughs) take. Much like the cyberpunk genre is supposed to be, this movie is all style over substance. Yes. Yep. And Paul, in honor of the many F-bombs thrown in this movie... What's your fucking quick take? Well, uh, fucking, I just have to say real quick, as someone who grew up in in high school, uh, hanging out with you, Jay, and you, Chris, playing a lot of cyberpunk role-playing game and, and Dark Conspiracy and Shadowrun and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I am stunned that I had not seen, that one of you two had not introduced me to this movie prior to 2020. Mm. You know what I mean? This is the year of cyberpunk, though. Hey, Chris, what's your quick take? Um, it was okay. <laughs> Stick around, folks. It's going to be a good one. We, we have this real, we have this real, like, ebb and flow of having really prepared things and then, like, nothing. <laughs> Jay, I think that, like, eight, the 18-year-old version of you and Chris, the maybe 19, 20-year-old version of you. 19, 20s version of me. Hey, pal. 19 or 20-year-old version of you when you guys were living together. Like, how was this not, like, on the VCR at some point? You know what I mean? It seems like it would have been really up our alley back in the day. Uh, yeah, that's a great question, Paul. I have no idea how it got past me. Right. I don't. I have no good answer for you. You're absolutely right. We probably would have ate this up. Yeah. I'd heard of it. I'd heard of it at some point, but I've. this was the first time I've ever seen it. Maybe it just didn't, like, didn't have wide distribution or something. Yeah, I think uh, Lawnmower Man probably put a really sour taste in our mouths for the cyberpunk movie <laughs> genre. It is, it is wild that this film isn't more <laughs> prevalent because, as Deborah Shelton put it, when asked why you should watch this movie, she said, Qu- and I'm quoting, to watch the most amazing stunts I have ever witnessed. Wow. Well, yeah, maybe, I mean, that's maybe. Really some cool ones. Yeah. Kind of fair. I mean, the stunt the stunt coordinator, not the stunt, sorry, the special effects uh, coordinator on this, uh, said it was definitely very unusual to put so many major stunts in such a short period of time within this film. There are stunts right after each other. These long sequences that we're going to get into, but there is just... It is stunt after stunt after stunt after stunt after stunt. There are stunts you don't even realize are stunts. The stunts have stunts. The stunts are stunts. The stunts stunts stunts. be (laughs) stunting. Well, hey, let's just get into it then. So we start off with an opening monologue to find out this happens in just seven short years from now. It's already fucking happening. What are you (laughs) even talking about? I was going to say, this this takes place in a post-Donald Trump America. And I think it's pretty clear about that. It's things are burned out. There are cyborgs everywhere. Is that why this is that why the sky is so orange? <laughs> the the movie starts with just like sexy sax music and this this guy 
and this hot blonde just going back to a hotel room, and they are about to fucking do it. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty hot scene. I mean, she's groping him. It turns out she's groping him just to see if he has any guns. <sighs> Crush your throat. Well, yeah, so Alex Rain takes the gun, shoots her in the face, and, uh, you know, you break the law, you go to hell, and uh, and runs off. <laughs> passing yeah, He's a well, cop. I mean, sh- her head is all robotic. It's yeah. pretty cool. You see yeah. her head. Yeah. Like, it's pretty sweet. All, all the robo parts yeah. inside. That's pretty This neat. is where we find out that he is a cop, though. And she and she, he, he calls her a terrorist. Goddamn cop. Goddamn terrorist. What really confuses me is that if she's supposed to meet a bunch of people to launder data for, why the fuck is she picking up a John? Look, Chris, Let's that's just a great get question. This. <laughs> Let's just get this out of the way right now. There's going to be a lot of things in this movie where we're like, I, I wasn't quite sure what was happening here. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. going to happen, yeah. okay? I think there's a better movie in here, and I think it's too complicated, but it almost boiled down to, like, it's it's a really, really overly complicated version of Cyborg, And if you think about it. If you boil it down to the just barest elements, it's, like, guy taking a computer person to a place it there's this like cyborg is very straightforward this one is very just all over mess well you dial it down to just it's just action explosions guns yeah 2 minutes of exposition mm-hmm. violence action explosions guns 2 minutes of exposition and it's just repeat through an hour and 45 minutes was it it was yeah. fairly long you're really right chris because it's like there's like that 2 minutes of exposition where you're like i tr- you're trying to grasp what what connects these last two action scenes together but <laughs> yeah. but then but then you see a 7 minute long absolutely fucking insane action sequence and you're like I wish that was I wish gifts were 7 a minute so I could send this to my friends like yeah. it is just insane yeah yeah the st- and again the style like the weapons they're using it's awesome yeah. like uh, like the whole look of the movie is so many explosions so cool yeah so let's skip ahead i mean there's a big action scene right after the the hotel scene, Alex kind of flees across the street to the burned out construction zone, I guess. There's that a big... was a cool location. Yeah, that was oh, pretty cool. yeah. And there's, you know, a big, like, I don't know what, it, this scene feels like it's a 15 minute long action scene. Just guns like blazing away. Yeah. yeah guns blazing long. away, explosions. People are jumping places. People are rolling places and shooting yeah. while they're rolling. They're, they're falling down on giant poles and like shooting. <laughs> It's, yeah. The poles are Dude, exploding. Dude, that was like a 60-foot pole. <laughs> and <laughs> it was the exploding pole. And and did you notice the scene? Okay, so the girl, there are two guys, and or two or three guys and a couple of girls in really short miniskirts chasing Alex. And did you catch the scene with the one girl climbing up the building after Alex? You're, oh, well, okay, I swear God was damn it. only there. Chris, that would <laughs> not, come on, this was written by a woman. Okay, we are not going to be <laughs> pulling bullshit like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just there there's gratuitous panty shots in th- not just then throughout Chris. You, there's a lot of like she's just wearing such a short skirt. Hey Chris, I got to go get a beer. All right, get a beer, Paul. We will continue on our way talking about this. That there's a dog. Uh, Alex rescues a dog near the end of this action scene. A puppy! A little puppy. Rescues a little puppy. George Lucas stole this idea, Chris. You talk about it, but you know George Lucas stole this fucking idea from this movie. I have no idea what you're talking about. You're talking about Red Tails? No. I'm talking about... (laughs) Paul will know. When Paul gets back in here, Paul's going to know exactly what George Lucas stole. Anakin's a puppy? No, Anakin's not a puppy. This is going to get fucking cut because you guys are playing dumb. Paul. Huh? Paul. Okay, these guys are giving me horse shit right now because there's a specific scene in this film that we know George Lucas saw and said, oh, I'm putting yeah. this into you know Indiana Jones Crystal now. Skulls. I get it now. You know, yeah, we I know, know he fucking now. stole it. What, Chris? What now? All the, all the goons are dead except for one. Yeah. Um, and she's about to blow the shit out of the burned out building Alex is hiding in. Finds this puppy, and he names it Mutt before the entire building explodes. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Paul, Paul, you and I saw Kingdom of the Skulls or whatever well, in the theater in together. Box. 
He puts it in a fucking safe to save it from an explosion. <laughs> which is what George Lucas saw and said, I'm going to take that idea and put it in my next movie. <laughs> you sure we know do? It. Are you thinking of Wally, Mike? <laughs> anyway, so I, it's, a, it's, a this, it's at this point that we figure out that Alex himself is not entirely human. He's only, what, 86.5% human or some shit like that's that? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%, that's correct. He's got a he's got a robot knee, robot leg that is trapped, but thankfully allows him to escape by some shrapnel in it, stabs the girl, and the LAPD come and save the day. Hooray! Adios! And so we get sort of a Robocop kind of rebuilding the person scene, except there's what, you know, an eighth the budget in this movie. So you don't actually get the cool Robocop costume. You just get Olivier Gruner as a cyborg. Yeah. But then they do specifically say, no, no, that dick's fine. We don't need to make that cyber. (laughs) They don't say that. They don't. They don't give him the Mr. Stud. Well, did you watch the version (laughs) I watched? Uh, Apparently not. Is there Mr. Stud? Someone went and, and rented the premiere version on Amazon Prime to watch this because he wanted to make sure he got all the good stuff. Nice. I don't know if it's any different. It just cost me $3. <laughs> you got ripped off, brother. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Supposedly the ending might be different because it's the first movie that the free one is called Nemesis. And the second one, and it's from 1992. This one is from 2018, it says, and it's called Ooh. Nemesis 1. Wow. So, I don't I know. Saw that. Well, well, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> we'll see if I remember any differences or you guys think I'm talking horse shit, but I'm genuinely being serious. We'll see. Hey, I tell you what, guys. If Chris, if you don't mind really quick, let's cuz Mike was talking about this earlier. Let's figure this out really quick in terms of whether or not there are two different versions of the film or not because there's been some debate about this. You don't want to save this for the end? Uh, well, it's just that I got Tim Bavlenka on the phone right now. So, Tim? <laughs> uh, you're, you're a bit of a nemesis expert. You own the Blu-ray, do you not? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I have a really fantastic uh, uh, disc collection there. And, and so we're kind of debating here. There's been some talk that there are two different versions of the first film. Can you uh, sure. confirm or deny that? Paul, I'm going to deny that there's two versions of the film and confirm that there's three versions of the film. What? Everyone's freaking out, Tim. Yeah, it's, um, so there's a theatrical cut, which is, you know, the obvious one, the one that's on Prime. (laughs) Great movie. Yeah. Uh, There is the director's cut, which is, uh, a little bit shorter, actually, uh, but apparently some more violent footage was added in. Okay. Ooh. And then there is the Japanese cut, Ooh. <laughs> which is um, they basically cut out the entire robot skeleton fight, and uh, he just kind of like wakes up in that little coma scene. And uh, that's really about it. But it, yeah, that's it's that that robot scene is gone, which is just weird. Hmm. Huh. Well, Tim, uh, I appreciate you clearing all that up for us. Well, thank you, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, Tim. Bye, bye. See ya. Wow. All right. Well, that is a. I believe this is a B movie mania exclusive. No one has ever <laughs> put these pieces together quite like <laughs> Tim has. For us at B-Movie Mania. That is amazing. Thank you, Tim. Now, where were we? So, six months later, Baja New America. Alex is recovering from his new rebuilt body with his puppy, who's now full grown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going going for a run on some sand dunes. And that puppy's going to come into play in a really major way in about five minutes. When I say he's going to come back in a major way, he sets up the, the main plot of John Wick. (laughs) (laughs) this fucking dog is so wasted there was no reason for this dog to be in the movie 
Not at all. It, no. You see him as a puppy, you cut to six months later, he's an adult, and he gets shot by a cyborg. Yeah, it's at this point where you realize, I don't like anyone in this movie. <laughs> yeah. It's... I mean, well, they wear some awfully, they again, the girls wear some awfully short skirts. So, if you're... Yeah, but they fucking kill the dog. They do yeah, kill the dog. Remember what happened with John Wick when John Wick lost his dog? Alex doesn't do nothing but bury him in the sand. Well, I think this really sets up Sam as the villain because Jared comes across as sympathetic and like she kind of misses Alex and misses what they had together. And Sam is just there to kill the dog and to be the villain. What? <laughs> oh my god. Are you serious? Jesus Christ. God damn it, Paul. Paul, we can just keep going. All right. Hey, everyone. Paul's card is full. We're going to have to do bars and tone to start this episode all <laughs> over again. So I hope you guys remembered what you said. But, you know, okay, can I just say, Chris, real quick, because we skip a year ahead yeah. after mm -hmm, yeah. he turns down Jared and Sam, and he doesn't want to be a cop, and he becomes a smuggler. So he changes <laughs> new, he's got a new career and a brand new mullet. Yeah. And he's in Rio. He's on the new Rio grid. <laughs> but yeah. he admits that he sucks as a, as a smuggler he's and people terrible. usually die. <laughs> he also has a mullet now, too. Yeah. Yes, he's got a new new job and a new haircut. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if there is a drinking rule for this movie, a fun one might be to drink every time Alex changes his hairstyle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I do think the robot airplane fight at the end counts as a change of oh, hairstyle. Oh, totally. No, definitely. <laughs> Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, one thing I loved about the Rio de Janeiro scene is he's such a shitty smuggler, and he's supposed to meet this, like... It's just a contact, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a contact a to get smuggler some information. Contact thing? Yeah. And I'm beginning to see why Alex is such a shitty smuggler, because they're talking and having a slight disagreement, and Alex just pulls his gun right off. <laughs> like, come on. Alex, if you want to talk in terms of cyberpunk, like the role-playing game... Alex is a true solo. He talks with his guns, <laughs> he and he's always ready to throw down. Yeah. What I, I love, though, the, the contact that he's there to meet. He's totally unarmed, right, guys? Oh, <laughs> oh you would think. <laughs> tell, tell me what he does. <laughs> well, in this slight disagreement, his contact's face separates, <laughs> and a barrel comes out, and he... He has a gun in his face. <laughs> and it knocks Alex out. Like, it gets him. Don't worry, Alex. You're not gonna die. LAPD will put you back together. They want you for an assignment. Farnsworth wanted him alive. So he sent some dude out to New Rio de Janeiro to bring him back to Los Angeles. I guess it's Los Angeles. I don't know. They bring him back to some, like, Alamo-looking fucking prison area. Yeah, that was a that special is. location he wanted. I can't remember what it was, but the, I, if, if I remember correctly from what I was researching, they only had about, like, four hours to shoot oh, there. Oh, well. wow. Like, well. it was tight. Like, yeah, they had to get in and get out of that place. But it looked awesome. This is a pretty lengthy scene for that amount of time. I, dude, I gotta say again, like, the, the locations, how Albert puts these things together and the places that he picks to make a cyberpunk movie out with not a lot of money is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So this is where we finally meet Farnsworth. He's the commissioner of the LAPD, uh, a.k.a. Discount Robert Redford. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> well, it's it's Tim Thomerson. It's Jack but Death he, from the Transfers movies. He They yeah. they got someone to put a bomb next to his heart. Next to, uh... Yeah. Real escape from New York type yep. of situation. I need your skills again. And what makes you think I would help you? Because when they put you back together last week, they added a little something to your heart. A bomb. Enough to make it disappear. They say we need you. It's that classic trope of like, we need you to go do a thing and you have to do it because there's a bomb in your heart. Yeah. So you have to go do it for us kind of a thing. And, and I that's, still have trouble remembering what it is exactly he's supposed to do. Well, <laughs> so he needs to get he needs to get yeah. Jared. So well, right, okay. well, well, get Jared, Jared, Jared stole the security plans between the big summit or for the big summit between the United States and the Prime Minister of Japan. Even though they're merged, even the Japanese though, are looking for a way to eclipse well, the Americans. Apparently, well. apparently, the Japanese are using this as an excuse to somehow force. Farnsworth out of the commissionership of the LAPD. This screams a lot of uh, 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 man in the high castle uh, <laughs> politics to me. Mm -hmm. 
like the Japan and America thing, and then still like the insur- the insurgent situation, and and them still fighting, even though they're still one country technically. You know, it's funny you mentioned Man of the High Castle because Shang Tsung himself appears in a few minutes. <laughs> Perfect. Who's also who's also in Man <laughs> of the High Castle? I can't remember. His oh, okay. Name. Uh, Carrie. Oh right, something. you're right. Yeah, I, I don't remember his name. Did offhand. not think about that. But, Wait, yeah. is he the? Oh, is he Angie's son? Shit, is that that guy? He's Angie Brutta. He's like the head of the. Yeah. He's the head of the detectives thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit! There's some people in this movie. Yeah, yeah. There's a good cast. There are some people in this movie, <laughs> <laughs> and some robots. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so he's got to go to uh, where wh- I can't think of the. He's got to go to Shang Lu in Java. Yeah, Shang Lu. Shang Lu. To find Jared. And he's got a contact. He's supposed to find someone named Julian who will put him in touch with Jared. And they establish Billy, Billy. was already <laughs> sent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Billy is such a fucking bullshit pointless role. <laughs> oh my it God. is. It really is. Well, There's hey, no point for Billy at all. Well, while, while we're on the, on the topic of Billy, let's talk about Tom Jane's ass. <laughs> yeah. Billy. I've watched some of The Expanse. Mm. <laughs> Tom Jane here. It's really young looking Tom Jane. I, I did not recognize him the first time I saw the movie. And I had to, like, I knew he was in it, but I didn't. He's, but, he's not as gaunt as he's become in the in the current day. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't think he wears clothes in this movie. No. No, he has nothing, nothing on his body. Oh nothing and I did body. also read that he found out that uh, Julian was going to be nude in the scene. So he's like, well, I should be nude. Yeah. So that was his idea. Sharks come in all shapes and sizes, Billy. I told you that, didn't I? What are you going to do about it? Nothing, Billy. Nothing for now. It's this room that's reminiscent of of Apocalypse Now, where they're in this hotel room, and they are just covered in beads of sweat. Yeah. <laughs> just they just are. hanging out in this oh hotel God. room. The light's like orangey, ready, kind of in there. It's just like a fucking scene out of Apocalypse Now. And they're peeking out the window, or Tom Jane is standing up against the window, Dong just flopping out into the, the, the sun, basically. You don't see his dick. You gotta no, watch No, but you know, <laughs> you know anyone that looks in that window yeah. did. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, true, true. <laughs> hey, Shang Lu, man, anything goes. <laughs> what, Hell yeah, baby! <laughs> Shang Lu, what you got to lose? <laughs> Shang Lu! Can we, well, speaking of... As soon as uh, Alex gets off the plane, practically, and is walking to his hotel room, this, like, gang of white dudes yeah. <laughs> that look like they just belong at, like, a middle management convention <laughs> follow him, make no secret about the fact that they're going to rob him, and then they awkwardly start fighting, oh. and they just get their asses kicked. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, well, I love the thing that, to me, that speaks most about how dangerous Shang Lu really is, is that granny. There's an action scene later <laughs> on. And there's an old lady who's being, like, accosted by one of the cyborgs. She pulls a gun out of her purse. It's like, fucking cyborgs. Blam, 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 blam. And just shoots the shit out of him. Please. Don't shoot. No more. Please. <laughs> She shoots the cyborg oh, like 15 God. times. It's oh, and her so arm absurd. is just shaking. Like, she's <laughs> super old. Like, she can't hold the gun. She's just, or she couldn't hold a pencil without shaking. Like, she's just very old and frail, and it's fucking amazing. Hey, it's Shang Lu. Mm-hmm. Well, in addition to Julian and Billy, we also meet Angie who is played by Shang Tsung from the Mortal Kombat movies and the guy from The Man of the High Castle. And I cannot remember his name. I did not write it down. High Castle. Um, yeah, High Castle. His name is High Castle. <laughs> Angie High Castle. That's it. Angie High Castle. Make it easy on yourself, bro. I'm the boss here. Anybody smart mounted in Shang Lu? Only if I see. Yeah, so every, there are so many factions right now. There's LAPD, there's Julian and Michelle, there's Alex, there's Angie. There's a girl in a, like a bikini top running around all over the place here. Max Impact. Max Impact. Well, yeah, and now Julian's here. Yeah. Then, well, yeah, Julian explains, I'm with Jared, and Jared's body is dead. Well, but her mind and soul are on this chip. Uh, when oh. Julian was explaining this whole thing, <laughs> and she's like, here, okay, we have... 
Jared's consciousness on a chip. We have to take the chip to the Red Army Hammerheads because it's the best chance to stop Farnsworth. My honest reaction when they, when she's like, it's our best chance to stop Farnsworth, I was like, from what? <laughs> like, I don't even remember what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, one Olivier, thing, one, please. One thing I find hilarious is at some point, so the LAPD are also in Java, in Sheng Lu, and... <laughs> And fucking Alex is giving one of the like movie like narr- narrations, but it's somehow coming across the bug. Yes, that the LAPD yes, fuck. Has in place he's talking in his to eye. himself. <laughs> he, he's not even talking to himself. He's thinking the narration, right. and the LAPD can hear it in the other room. <laughs> the the LAPD are watching the movie. They're watching the movie with us. No more of their drugs. If Farnsworth is going to kill me tomorrow, I want to be clear. Hey guys, real quick, I'd like to really quickly just do a real quick segment called, Hey Paul, how you doing? <laughs> hey Paul, how you doing? Hey Mike, I'm doing good. Uh, well, actually, I'm not doing good. I'm not doing good. Oh no? No, Why? I can't get my card to work. Oh shit. Yeah, oh, so I'm recording oh, yeah. on my phone right now. Oh no. Okay. Right. Which is fine, but like I'll probably just kind of like, like Chris, if you have a specific question for me, feel mm-hmm. free to answer. But I'm just kind of going to hang out for the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you're needing, you're needing like some sort of robotic assistance, Paul? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, you do live in L.A. Oh, no. Yep. If someone could uh, hook me up with some sort of SD card uh, podcast recorder implant in my leg and also put a shark fin on my head, I would appreciate it. <laughs> Continue. Well, here, now we get into the the first big action scene that really yes! sold me on this movie. <laughs> this is fucking insane. Oh, God. We do need to say that Jared scrambles the heart bomb. Yeah. The signal. She jams yeah, his it. heart bomb is not it. functional. So he is not beholden to the LAPD anymore. That'll scramble the signals they try to send the bomb. You're safe for now. As they decode the jammer in your shoulder, the lights go out. When all five are gone, boom. Then we get some fucking gunfire. Holy yeah. shit. The middle managers are back. <laughs> I love the one dude with like the flat top and the fifty cal machine gun yes, and the wraparound yes. sunglasses. He like screams '90s cyberpunk to me. He is the love epitome, it. the embodiment of that style. It's so ridiculous. Everybody has sunglasses inside <laughs> all the time. Oh god, it's so abs- they're all like circular sunglasses and shit. But yep, yep. They know like Julian knows they're after Alex now, so she's like, let's let's. Escape through the back. So she shoves Alex into the bathroom, shuts the door, and says, I'll hold him off. And then at that point, two dudes, two of the middle managers, they shoot people-sized holes in the fucking <laughs> wall with their machine One for guns. each of them. One yeah, for yeah. each of them. And they bust through. And they're just blasting away at each other. And, and what does Alex do in the bathroom? Because he can't escape through the window. Dude. No. <laughs> amazing. This oh is god. amazing. <laughs> oh god. He fucking takes his machine gun and shoots a hole, a circular hole around himself in the floor. And he falls down and keeps doing it for what? Like five stories down or something. Yeah. I counted at least seven. There may have been more. <laughs> yeah. He, and the the concept of doing that is fantastic. <laughs> The way they shot it was fantastic. <laughs> yes. It, um, probably my favorite action stunt of the movie. Oh, God. It's so great. And you, you've got to see it just for that. I mean, I think this is like the prime example of what's so frustrating about this movie is that there's sections where it's just oh, fucking awesome, <laughs> followed by <laughs> 10, 15 minutes of like, what is happening? You know? Yeah. God, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did we go over that already? Sorry, I was out for a while. No, no, no you're right. No, no, no. But I would argue that this point is kind of where it kicks in, where there's very little exposition from how... Now, it's like Fury Road for the rest of this movie almost yeah. at this point. It's yeah. just chase. They're being chased, and they're doing wild shit. Well, 
Well, you do get a couple of minutes of like talking. I mean, because coming up as soon as Alex does escape, he plugs in. He finds out he can plug in the chip that he got that holds Jared, plug her into a computer and can talk to her. And she kind of fills in some of the blanks about uh, Sam was retro cloned and herself into a perfect cell for cell duplicate. That's impossible to detect. And I think I believe this is the first use of the term, Paul, state of the art. <laughs> we'll hear that a few times later. She was retrocloned into a perfect cell for cell duplicate of Farnsworth. Impossible to detect with existing scans. State of the art. Oh wait, okay, this leads into my my probably my second favorite action <laughs> bit of the movie. Oh, it's the best action scene in any oh movie, God. Jay. What's coming up right now? You the go. muddy water slide. They somehow yes. get themselves yes. onto an old water slide that is slicked from top to bottom with mud, and they're the the bad guy is on top of Alex, and they're flying down this thing, and just so happens there's oh, somehow God. a metal crossbar. <laughs> that Alex lifts the dude up and just pops his head right off. Well, it's the dude with oh. the with the gun in his face that we saw earlier. Yeah. <laughs> like the barrel comes yeah, out right. again, and thankfully, at that moment, there's the crossbar. And I want to know yeah. how that happened. Like his process I mean, of going from script to to executing these I mean, crazy. It's, it's clear the man sequences. knows how to stage a an action sequence and oh, take yeah. advantage of his surroundings wherever he is. Whatever you can see, it's like, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and that. He's yeah. really creative with that stuff. I'm going to call he knew it. Think so? I think he knew a place in Hawaii. He is a ho he is Hawaiian. Uh huh. I think he knew where he could film a lot of this. Do you think he met up with Andy Sedaris for any suggestions? I'd like to think I they would knew hope each so. other. I would <laughs> fucking hope so. That's a great. That's another. we got to just get a hold of Albert, man. Albert, did you know... Andy Sedaris. Please let us know. I have so many questions. So you leave your room through the floor? That's very, very slick. Who the fuck are you? Max Impact. Local guy. For the tourists, huh? At the bottom of this water slide, just waiting for Alex to land, another middle manager holds him at gunpoint, and the bikini girl, Max Impact, saves the day <laughs> and she gives us a little spiel about scanning her blah 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 blah. and now it's like okay i'll scan you <laughs> and what does she have okay mike mike what does she have a well she he's gonna scan her to make sure i don't know she's not robo or i don't know but he does it and then she pushes a little button in her belt and then this necklace with the pendant she has <laughs> shoots lasers out of its eyes at him. Like, I love it. Oh, I don't. It's so ridiculous. Uh, I love it. <laughs> and can we, we haven't really mentioned, there's like a linguistic thing that's going on through some of the movie too. And especially with Max, like <clears throat> she's got like this weird Asian influenced kind of, way she talks but it's also kind of seems to be mixed with like a hawaiian dialect did you notice that? i mean it could be it could be some sort of attempt to uh in, invent like a future talk where you know like different places have yeah. mixed together a little bit that's what i took it as that it was some sort of mishmash yeah please alexa come on you don't even have to tip me or pay me the bump for legal acts huh you can even scam me if you like See if I'm telling you the truth, huh? It turns out, though, that Max Impact is working with Angie. And after she zaps him with her laser charm necklace, she, bring, <laughs> she brings him to Angie's... <laughs> she brings him to Angie's burned-out power plant hideout, I guess. So apparently, Angie's one of the leaders of the... He's, he's not a middle manager of the Hammerheads. He's one of the bosses of the he's Hammerheads. He's the last boss. The last boss. I guess they've all mm -hmm. been wiped out. Angie-san. Angie-san. Yep. yep, that's right. And uh, then the <laughs> fucking grenade flies through the window. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> it's more fucking explosions. <laughs> was it Angie or somebody else that dove on the grenade? It was somebody else. It was one of okay. uh, one of Angie's guys. Because Angie gets all grenade. jacked up here, too. Yeah. Well, one thing I think is hilarious is the dude throws himself on the grenade to protect everyone, right? <laughs> then we cut to outside of the building. Explosion. <laughs> flames flying out the windows. <laughs> it didn't you can't jump matter. on the grenades in the future. Oh, it's a God. future grenade. You it's can't, a future grenade. Matter. This is 
where we're getting, Jay, where <laughs> yes. Hornsworth's gun just blows up, like, towers and trees <laughs> and forests. And it doesn't matter. Like, they constantly run from him. They're jumping off of waterfalls. Yep. And Hornsworth just stays in place, just shooting at them. Explosions <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Things falling left and right. Oh, my God. When you say towers... We're not talking about, like, a little grain silo or something or whatever. <laughs> there is a literal 105-foot-tall steel tank tower that they used <laughs> gas bombs to <laughs> blow up. <laughs> and yeah. it fucking falls, and you fucking see the explosion <laughs> heat go right past that, that uh, uh, Olivia. <laughs> Olivia. Like, it's fucking just... He was oh fucking there. Oh, my God. It's oh, dude. So great. If, if you pause it at the exact right moment, you can see the terror in his eyes. You can see his life flash yes. before him. <laughs> That's probably why he was crabby on set. <laughs> they almost dropped a tower on him. Oh so, God. yeah, so Alex takes a zip line down. So. <laughs> Into some guy's house who just looks yes. confused as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is near the point, too, where Farnsworth, once again, he's trying to appeal to Alex's robot side, I guess, because he's like, why would you help the humans? They screw up the Earth. They don't have any appreciation for anything they have. Why don't you just join me? And it's, I mean, it doesn't work, but he tries again. I don't understand why you would help them. In time, the humans will destroy themselves and this precious Earth. They have no appreciation of what we have. You're really more like us, Alex. More machine than human. Yes, did we say already that he is full Metal Terminator at this point? No, not, not at this point, but in a few minutes he will be. Because there's the waterfall, right? Are we there Oh, yet? well, uh, we we're waterfall? almost there. That's, that's when they're trapped. That's when Farnsworth blows the shit out of that forest. And they've got yes. trees down, and Alex and Max are trapped under the trees. And we get the state of the fucking art, Alex. State of the fucking art, Alex! And, you know, join us, Alex. And Alex is like, never. And hits, like, the board his gun is on and, like, catapults it into his hand and blows the shit out of him. So I think that's... Yeah, yeah so they get away. And then there's the waterfall scene. They do... It does a flip off the waterfall. And <laughs> that's where he gets the explosion gun and yeah. blows the shit out of Farnsworth. And then we get the the Terminator endoskeleton sort of thing. Yes, he's I mean, the, 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 well, the thing to point out about this, though, is that it's not the, the, that they stand on solid rock and shoot at him. <laughs> they jump off of the waterfall first and then somehow in the middle of like a triple backflip, <laughs> shoot backwards at him and somehow hit him and only blow off his skin and his muscle and his organs to expose Paul. the skeleton. It's the luckiest shot in the history of the Paul. world. Paul, well, it also helps that Farnsworth is state of the fucking art. Oh, that's true. <laughs> state of the fucking art, baby. State of the fucking art, Alex! Alex and Max need to get this chip with Jared to the volcano. I mean, the hammerhead bosses are all dead, so yeah, yeah. I don't know who they're going to fucking give it to, but there's some dude in an airplane. There's, yeah, somebody that they need to get to. I am so <laughs> thrilled that the volcano comes into play. They mentioned that when he goes to the hotel, the guy's like, I can get a, a view of the hotel that looks at the volcano, and I'm like, if they don't fucking go to the volcano at some point, you cannot mention a volcano. And guess what? They fucking literally shot at a vol fucking fucking shit fuck volcano. It was cool looking. But there's a there's a plane waiting for them, and Max just hops in the cockpit, and the pilot's like, cargo hold. Isn't the pilot the guy at the hotel? I thought he was, but I thought, I thought, thought that guy died. Hundred percent is right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I yeah, but I think. He had the same mustache, I thought. Yeah, I, th I have no idea who this character is. I mean, I assume I'm he's pretty the sure it's the hotel. same guy. Yeah, I yeah. think but, it's the same guy. But if you're trying to make a fast getaway or make a quick exchange, why would you schedule the meeting on top of a volcano? <laughs> you can't go anywhere else in town. Maybe a little more inconspicuous. <clears throat> Well, Paul, there's, uh, there's only one place to land a plane like that in Java, and that's on top of the fucking volcano. On top of volcano. I mean, <laughs> Shang Lu isn't known for its airports. What was that? I, I don't know. 
the fucking robot skeleton of Farnsworth slash Sam leaps at the plane just as it takes off and grabs onto <laughs> the, the cargo door, right? Classic it, trope. Love tra- it. Oh, yeah. It fucking bursts through. So we get this. Well, no. No. He does not burst. <laughs> let me say. He effectively can openers through. Like, it's... it's <laughs> That is it, true. That's true. It is it is a slow and amazing stop motion adventure of just getting through the door. <laughs> so this robot skeleton can openers its way through, <laughs> through the plane cargo door. And Alex is fucking shocked. Like, I don't know what is happening. But he just sees this robot skeleton and they <laughs> they're fighting. I mean, Alex is I don't know what, I mean, I assume his fists are part of what has been replaced, because he is fucking full-on punching this robot in the face, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, like it's nothing. And eventually, the skeleton pulls him out of the plane, right? But not before something important <laughs> happens. Jay? Are you talking about his haircut? <laughs> I'm talking about the haircut. Why don't you oh, describe God. that? Well, he grabs him. And starts pulling him out. But, you know, he, he like Mike said, he can open his, his way through. So that <laughs> hole is lots of jagged metal there. Don't, you'll you cut know, your finger. You'll cut your finger on. You'll cut your fucking finger you'll off. you'll cut the top of your head off. Like, <laughs> Alex catches his forehead. And as the robot pulls him through, his the entire top of his head just comes right off. <laughs> <laughs> and he's dangling over a volcano oh. by a Terminator <clears throat> with the top of his head cut off. And it's just all like he's got a metal skull underneath. Out of the air, Alex. Alex is holding on to the plane. The Terminator is holding on to Alex's other arm. And Alex's arm is ripped off. It's his, <laughs> yeah. it's his fucking it is. robot arm. Uh, Alex kind of says like, "Well, here, it's if it's yours, you can have it." So I think he, there was some sort of cyborg release switch to say like, "I do not want my arm anymore." <laughs> to your to your arms? Why would you do that? In case you're in a plane over a volcano being <laughs> pulled on by a terminator. It's like a lizard. Yeah, exactly. Well, I want to say, regardless of how Alex's arm is ripped off or released. Quick release, whatever you want to do. Lizard style, baby. <laughs> the, f- the fucking Terminator robot skeletons falling, holding onto Alex's arm, and then it fucking explodes. Yeah, it just hits the side of the Why? Volcano. Why the fuck does it explode? Is that That's what I was getting at earlier. Did the surgeon who installed the heart bomb, Oh, was he drunk and he placed the bomb in Alex's arm instead no. of his heart? Why did his arm explode? Uh, because it was superimposed over a, a, an image, and they got the perspective wrong, is why. It was supposed to hit the ground and explode, but it looked like it exploded in the air. But my problem, I'm sneaking this one fucking in, is I was mad that it, this is the only explosion I've ever been disappointed in, because... They were over top the volcano, and I really wanted that Terminator to go inside the volcano lava. Oh. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool. It would, you know, it would have been awesome if there was like a thumbs up as it fell into the lava. <laughs> yeah. That would have been oh. fucking great. <laughs> or maybe a thumbs down in this case. Hey, you know what? In the fourth cut, they filmed that, and we'll put that back in. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they escape to the North Pacific Islands, and... They deliver Jared finally, and I don't know where this location was, but it was crazy looking because I'm not even sure what the function of it is. It's just a hallway that's hundreds of feet <laughs> long, but about seven feet wide. So Alex is all wrapped up, his whole face, mm, everything yeah. except like a mouth hole, and <laughs> always need Max the mouth. Impact. As long as you got that mouth hole, the mouth hole was all important. Hole. Very Breen, very Neil Breen. Um, Jared is about to be downloaded into the computer, and she says once that happens, her personality is gone, and she's pure data. Effectively, she will die. I'll lose my memory. All my programming. Everything. You'll only exist as pure data. I will be dead. So she says this goodbye to him. Oh God, Again, yeah, this emotional yeah. goodbye to him. And his response is, 
get me the hell out of here. <laughs> the whole movie, Jared is trying oh, to like what an asshole. Pour her heart out or whatever is left of it to Alex, and he does not <laughs> give a rat's ass the entire film about her. Well, wait a minute. The other thing is, she's trying to get some sort of response out of him, and she goes. Are you crying, Jared? She thinks that she somehow sees him. How are you going to see that he's crying when his entire face is wrapped up? <laughs> he's a yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she just wants some sort of emotion. He will not give it to her. Goodbye, Alex. Get me in the hell out of here. But hey, Alex shoots the dude in the junk. I mean, it's on the roof of the LAPD headquarters. Alex shoots the guy in the crotch. The end. No. no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, this is the ending where Alex sits in the rain reading the letter to Farnsworth, or from Farnsworth, right? The real Farnsworth is begging him to hunt undercover cyborgs. From beyond the grave. In a yes. letter. Yeah. yeah, she says, let's start at the beginning, New York. <laughs> Sam and Max walk up some stairs off into the Los Angeles sunset. It's not Sam and Max. That's a great cartoon video I'm game sorry, by LucasArts. But you Alex can tell that Max. my mind is off on some better form of media. Alex and Max walk off up the stairs into the Los Angeles sunset. But it's still not the end. It's no. not over just yet. No, because off screen you hear a woman, which I don't know how anybody, anybody watching this movie for the first time would understand that it's supposed to be Sam. Should we take them out now? Why not? So you pretty much are just left with the idea that as soon as this movie cuts to black, there's going to be more explosions in action. It just continues. You, you go, you get a boner just waiting for it. I got yep. the exact opposite impression. I thought that Alex and Max... They just died right there. So there's some sniper, like Sam's a sniper on top of the well, yeah. Los Angeles LAPD headquarters. and just shoots him in the head. Uh, that's actually a theory. Like, yeah. that's actually something they talked about. or like. Well, that, I hope you... Well, you know what? At some point, we're going to find out, because I'm picking a Nemesis movie every fucking season from here on out. Chris, let's just get to it. Pick them all next <laughs> <Yeah>. season. <laughs> <laughs> all your movies are Nemesis! <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how pissed off Paul will be? <laughs> Rating time! All right, guys. I had a lot of options for... The rating scale this time around. What I eventually settled upon, I think, pays tribute to the main location of this movie. Ooh. So we're going to rate this from 1 to 100. Shang losers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Paul, let's, uh, let's hear what you have to say about Nemesis. Oh my god, such a mixed bag, like mixed bag city, this movie, you know, like some truly amazing, amazing stuff in terms of the stunt work and in terms of the action sequences. And then some stuff where, I mean, like literally I was rewinding to figure out what was happening. It's very 50-50 for me, but I'm going to be generous and go uh, 61 what is it? Shang Losers? Shang Losers. 61. <laughs> All right. Mike. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple parts where, you know, you're trying to figure out what's going on, obviously. But much like a, uh, a David Lynch film, I think you need to let go of trying to understand <laughs> what's happening. And and just, just go with it. Just accept what the artist is trying to give you <laughs> and and accept it and it this this is wild this is a fun movie to get into and just be confused by and have a blast with and you will talk back and forth with your friends and love every second of it uh alex rain rated himself 86.5 i can't do that that's you know <laughs> that's 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 not acceptable uh, I gotta bump it up a little bit. Let's oh call my it. God. <laughs> wow! I'll bump it up five percent. Ninety-one point five. Wow! Jesus wow. Christ! That's way higher than I thought. Insane. Anyone would rate this That's one. insanity. Wow. Really? Gee. No. 
I did not no. think it would break 90. This was fun as hell. Yeah, well, I got that. Well, Jay, Jay, what do you have to add to this? Um, you know, I think, Mike, the key phrase that you said was letting go. Mm-hmm. I think you just have to take the ride yes. with this. <laughs> so I, another thought I had while watching this movie, what, I, I wish Albert Pine could just make movies forever. Like, oh. And I wish he had the money to do it right. Mm-hmm. Because I think the guy... The guy has built franchises, five and six film franchises, out of really low budget stuff, and he's doing it effectively. So I would love to see what he could continue to do if he was in good health and had the resources to do it. I think we'd get some wild stuff, very imaginative stuff. But yeah, man, I had a lot of fun watching it. I had a lot of fun watching it twice. Um, I'm going to go 82 Shang Losers. <laughs> All right. Chris. Nice. Uh, you know, man, I agree with like a lot of what you guys had to say. I think the action scenes were fucking crazy and amazing and so ridiculous. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, unfortunately, the movie like dragged for me. Like There were a few times I wanted to see just how much longer I had to go on this. The script was... Well, there were some, you know, it was kind of hard to follow, so I'm going to knock it down a little bit. But I'm going to knock it back up for uh, casting Tom Jane and his fabulous ass. <laughs> so, so Paul gave it a something in the 60s, Mike in the 90s, Jay, you're in the 80s. I'm going to go with 70s. Uh, 70s. I'm going to give it a 73. 73 Shang Losers. It's really interesting how varied we are in yeah. this. Usually, you know, one person is the outlier. We are across the board here. Yeah. <sighs> Mike, I know you have something amazing picked for our season finale. And I want to hear exactly what this is. On the next episode of B-Movie Mania... Oh, uh, I don't even... It's arguable... Whether this movie came out in 2003 or two, or 1998, it's, oh it's I believe 1998. Um, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hold on. It's called... <clears throat> I gotta get my voice ready. It's called... Despiser. Oh my mm. god. <laughs> Paul knows what I'm saying when I go, The Despiser. Despiser. It is a wild ride that I can only describe as a mix of Lifetime movie and CGI and sanity. Oh it my is God. the Despiser. You can see it on. <laughs> you can see both it and a making of documentary on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's probably somewhere else, but the Despiser is what is chosen for the finale, and I hope you boys are excited for. The Despiser. I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna go watch my DVD right now. You have DVD of Despiser, Paul? Of course I do. Okay, so I'm all right. So Paul likes my pick. I think. Fuck yeah. (laughs) God damn it! Well, I have high hopes for this now. Despiser. Despiser. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Look forward to Despiser. I didn't even get that reference yet, but I'm going. I'm going all in. <laughs> yeah, on there it is. Thank you for listening, listener. Listen to Despiser in two weeks. <laughs> in the meantime, give us a five star review. Buy a T shirt. Rate us. Email us. Mike will eat more Malort. He will eat the bottles of Malort if you give us a five star <laughs> review. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. I'm going to stop recording now. All right. All right. I'm not going to stop recording. No. Come on.